Hi guys, Marika here with another card video, which is going to be a kind of male summer card. And the character I'm going to call it today is called Polka Dot Pal Douglas, and it is by Little Miss Muffet Stamps. And these characters come without a face, so today I thought I'd show you how I sketch the face. So I usually start out with a pencil, number two pencil, or something and then I'm going in with my Copic multiliners. I'm using the Copic multiliners because I know that they can work with my Copics which I'm going to use to color him up later. I'm starting out with my 0 0.05. The only problem with this pen is that when I bought it I actually bent the nib. These nibs are replaceable though but I haven't really bought a new nib so uh, I instead went in with my uh, 0 0.1 instead, uh, 0 0.01 maybe, a very thin one, uh, to uh, add the lines afterwards. And to finish it all off I'm going to go in with my eraser and remove all the extra lines uh, here and there. So for the skin I'm I'm actually playing around doing digital art at the moment so I've been doing a lot of faces and I thought that I would kind of take what I've learned from that into working with Copics. Working with Copics is very different than many other mediums because you are pulling the dark color out to the light. So you have to think about uh, not adding too much dark knowing that um, you can always art add more dark, more dark later uh, and also you kind of have to figure out where you want your shadows to be a little bit beforehand and leaving space for the lighter tones so you can't go in afterwards and really lighting something up you can do it a bit with your uh, colorless blender but it isn't super easy to do so when you are coloring your your little uh, images you want to kind of figure out um, where you want your lights to go and where you want to dock to go and you can do that uh, just print the images uh, or stamp the images on ordinary copy paper and play around with a um, lead pen like the pen I used to sketch his face on so you can kind of add shadows that way and figure out how you want to add dimension to the face and you don't really need to add as much dimension as I do I just think it's kind of cool to turn them um, turn them into a little bit more human faces sort of for the hair I'm actually I used images Google images for reference to do the hair today uh, I had a lot of fun it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted. I haven't really played around with male hair that much so it was a little bit harder than just female hair but I googled, I actually started out googling uh, the face and googled a round male face and then kind of tried to mimic that to give him the shape that he has and uh, I actually saw an image a little bit longer down in the list that had this kind of hairdo and I'm like yeah this is the hairdo I want to try out uh, and uh, again I try to figure first out where I want my darks with a lighter pen um, and then add the dark actually I think went through two or three times through the different colors just to add more dimension to um, his hair and, and some lines so it would look sort of like real hair. Then I'm going in with my greys and this is usually the way I work when I know that I'm gonna have uh, greys in an image or try to get whites because basically I'm using greys to make it look like whites to give the shadows then I try to do that before I add any other colors and the reason for me personally choosing to use lights first and darks later is that I like to go very close to the line and if I then have a darker color on the other side of the line sometimes the nib will pick it up and pull it right across the image. I've done it a whole bunch of times where I have like red streaks all over my white because I'm clumsy. <laughs> 
So I choose to actually do my lighter colors first and my darker color later. Some differences in this is that I like to do my skin color and my hair depending on how the hair color, I might actually do the hair color first to kind of know how many shadows I can put into the face. And then I usually go on to the clothes with the lighter first and the darker later. If I have a color scheme in mind, sometimes I just pick a color at a time and then like, yeah, what do I need now? And then I might actually go in with the dark first. But this time I had a plan. I wanted to go in with kind of natural, neutral browns and blues because I, I wasn't sure which pattern papers I would use or anything. I just knew that I really wanted to use uh, Douglas. So Douglas, uh, a little bit about him. He's a, actually a character from a book uh, which is called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and it was Towel Day this week uh, which is a part of that book. I love that book. It's awesome. I never did get to uh, make a card with him for that so I thought well I'm going to show you that you can use this little Towel Day card character also for other cards. So I had in mind that I wanted it to be a summer card. Like he's going down to the beach. Yeah, he's he got a lot of clothes on, but he's going down to the beach. So I'm going to use this stamp set by Simon's Stamp, which is called Flip Flop Season. And I'm going to also going to use this um, rectangular, stitch rectangular uh, die. And I'm going to use some more of that same paper that I used to color him on. And here you can actually see a very big difference because I'm using some Nina cardstock for the um, square because it's a little bit thicker than the paper I use for my uh, col ordinary coloring. So I'm using Nina as my card base, which I stamped my summer hello on. And then I wipe it off with my Lawn Fawn chamois, which is awesome. It is the best thing to wipe stamps with. And then I'm going to go in and do the flip flops because I'm going to have them as accents on my card. And I do them onto my uh, Make It Crafty blending paper. Here I show you how I'm picking my colors from my hex chart together with that pattern paper, which is the pattern paper I choose to use, which is from Lawn Fawn. So first I'm, I'm going to do a gradient both on the shoes uh, or the flip flops and the hello. So I start by doing the gradient on the flip flops and it blends really, really easy. You hardly get any lines at all. Then I'm going over uh, to the Nina cardstock and you are going to see that it didn't blend as easy on the Nina cardstock as it did on the uh, make it crafty cardstock. However, if you want to get a better blend, you can actually go over it a couple of more times on the Nina and you get a little bit be better blend. But um, the denser the paper is, usually the easier you get a blend for your, your uh, Copics. So yeah. To finish it off, I'm cutting down the pattern paper to four and a five and a quarter, or five sorry, four by five. Then I cut my base to five by eight and score it at four. So I get a top folding card. Uh, this is also Nina that I'm using as my card base. It's one of my favorite to use as a card base because it's not too flimsy and it's not too thick. Then I'm going to add my paper to my card base and I'm doing this really, really carefully and really, really slow so that it fits perfectly. If you have a hard time getting it really, really right, you can either cut it with your scissors or you can actually use wet glue. I don't use that much wet glue because it can also warp the paper. You have to be careful about that with your wet glue. And for my finished part, I'm putting all of my accents and putting them onto my little stitched rectangular first. And I'm doing that with foam tape. And then I turn it around and I add foam tape on the back side. And I'm adding double foam tape on the parts that are sticking out. So kind of get a full cover of those, um, of the character. 
and then I put the whole piece sort of in the middle on that card base that I created and that was the card for today. I hope you liked it. If you do, please thumbs it up. It means a lot to me and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, just comment down below and down below you will also find all the details of the card. And here are two other cards made with the Little Miss Muffet stamp stamps. Thank you so much for watching and see you later. Bye!